you gotta be willing to tell them that you you do this. You know, what what did I do this morning? What did I do? I got up at 4:30, I got to the gym at 4:50, and I and I did 200 flights. You think that's easy? No, I'm preaching toughness because I'm trying to model toughness. Welcome to the Jamoti Podcast. We are all surrounded by amazing coaches and leaders. So let's get an inside look at not just what they do, but how they do what they do. After all, becoming the best versions of ourselves is Jamoti, just a matter of doing it. Today, we are joined by the head boys basketball coach of Clear Lake High School, Tommy Penders Jr. Coach Penders has 25 years of coaching experience, 21 as a head coach, with a career record of 492 wins and 216 losses. He led the Clear Lake Falcons to a 6A state runner-up finish in 2015. He was named 6A Coach of the Year, as well as Houston Area Basketball Coaches Coach of the Year in 2015. Coach Penders is a six-time District Coach of the Year. Before we hear from Coach, take a moment to subscribe to our podcast and follow us on social media at Jamoni Podcast. Well, I'm ready. I'm ready for some basketball talk. All right. Well, first of all, like I said, I want to thank you so much. I This is an honor for me because I was a coach sitting at a TABC years ago listening to you teach some of the drills that you do at your at your school and i just thought man that that's a coach one that i would love to i probably would have loved to play for and also would just love to learn from so this is an honor for me man oh well thanks i appreciate it it's you know you know enough about good coaches coming from baylor so (laughs) you have you have a good idea and and, uh um, of course your your area is full of great basketball and and great people as well so we can learn from each other yeah our entire state i mean that was one of the motivations for me doing this is just to to get more high school coaches on and and obviously college coaches small college coaches from texas because there there's so many guys like you out there that i mean you had the you were fortunate to speak at tabc so more people got to kind of hear the way that you teach but there's so many great coaches that Ne- don't necessarily get a platform that often so it's, it has been a ton of fun getting to highlight them a little bit and i think it's it's important because there's always another way uh sometimes we get caught in our own little i don't i wouldn't i wouldn't call it rut but your own little idiosyncrasies and you're consistent with what you do i think especially in high school basketball you're you're constantly having to change and, and adapt so that's that's why i like to i'm always on youtube i'm always you know, watching people talk, stealing plays. Uh, Who are some and, of your favorite people to follow or watch on YouTube? Sure, it, it doesn't really matter. My my go to happens to be lately is, um, I I'll, I'll put let's say, um, scissor action quick hitters, and I all of a sudden you have like you have about thirty percent NBA and seventy percent. Um, college basketball and then i i like to call it pinch post action but the gino oriama um action off the fast break i call it pinch post because i'm always trying to get my bigger guard to catch the ball on the just whatever whatever it is you got it um i got some of my best stuff recently because we have we have a good big man um who's not necessarily a post-up player i got my some good stuff recently out of just just watching college basketball quick hitters 2022 mm-hmm. and it, it gives you 13 minutes of great quick hitters from the ncaa tournament because we don't see a lot of zone so we see it we see a lot of man to man because we tend to shoot well and um i just i i love going on on youtube i love going on twitter yeah and stealing um you name it you just go on there and you see my likes and is that I don't care what it is, European action. Yeah. Three on three uh women's uh basketball is really good. You get he gets some great action out of that. Um and the men's. Yeah. So let me I'm ask all, you, I'm, you you just mentioned something that uh, I'm curious about. Uh I don't we don't see a lot of zone either. And I think the whole idea is, well, you know, they, they shoot the three a ton. And so that not I'm not saying scares people, but it it, it keeps them away like the smart thing well you don't want to zone a team that shoots a lot of threes but and i'm not sure hopefully i don't know i don't know who's going to listen to this but if some of our opponents listen to it i've actually thought over the years that zoning us 
it is effective. We see man the most. We prepare for man the most, and and our continuity is where our 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 flow is where we get a lot of three. So all of a sudden, a team zones us, and you know, guys are a little bit less aggressive. You know, yeah. they they maybe hold the ball a little bit longer than we like. We want it to make the ball work. Do you think that zones would actually be effective against you, or uh, are they right in in not doing that? I think they're right, <laughs> but, but that's that's just because when I first started coaching, I coached in the Atlantic 10 as an assistant coach, okay? And there was a team called Temple that ran <laughs> the best zone in the history of college basketball. I don't – Jerry Tarkanian may be up there with that, Abimba. So we had to prepare for – I was coaching for four years. So all four years were in the Atlantic 10 Hmm. and we had to learn how to attack the zone. And what I learned, um, John Calipari is really good to, to watch, uh, his zone offense. And, uh, my father also was very good, quick hitters. I I think we're going to prepare five quick hitters and not an offense. The quick hitters are going to have two or three options out of them. So your kids in practice get really confident. And then you talk, you talk to them. I don't care what kind of team you have. If these if these son of a gun zone us, they're in for a long night. Your eyes should light up. Yeah. You should get 40 points. And so <laughs> I just say it, and it starts, yeah. starts now in August. Like we'll go through, let's say on Friday, we'll go through two zone sets. And I'll say, we'll never see a zone because we'll just cross the zone. And I'll, and I'll say to Eric, our best three point shooter, and Ethan, Ethan, if you ever see a zone, you need to write a thank you note to the opposing coach. And half of it's BS yeah. because I'm like you. I'm like, what the hell would happen if we saw? <laughs> well, but but I, I I agree though. You 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 do need to speak that into your into your team, especially a shooting team. Uh, I, I want my I want yeah I want my players to play with this a confidence that is just it's uncommon. Yeah. And so part of that is the way that we speak to them about their abilities and about their shooting and, and how we train. I always tell my guys, listen, if we see a zone, it's a license to pull. Like yeah. We already <laughs> shoot fast, guys. We're just going to get to shoot quicker. That's exactly. going to be even easier. So I, I'm with you there. I'm fascinated in getting to learn about coaches' daily habits, especially successful coaches like you, what makes them, uh, what's their organization, what's their schedule like? So what are some daily habits that set you up for success? Well, I I sincerely believe that, and this is probably a negative outlook on life, I think that life is about 70% doing things you really don't want to do. And it it's doing those things that you really don't want to do that make you better. So I like to get up at 4.15 in the morning and go to the gym. <laughs> you eat the, the stair- frog. You I, eat the I, frog. You get yeah. it done. <laughs> I, I, I go to the stair. You know, we start school at 7.20. So I, oh, wow. I, love to, I love to hit the Stairmaster. And I'm, I'm a baseball guy, so I'm very superstitious. So I, I feel like I have to get on the Stairmaster every day. And I, I, I work on that Stairmaster. And because I have arthritis in my, in my knee. So I want to get that moving. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'll go back to the house and, and get ready for, for work. I'll, I won't see my son. He starts school off late, but I'll hang out with my daughter and my wife and my, my dog for a little bit. And then I like to get to, I like to get, to, I think this is where it's kind of, I might be a little different. My favorite time of the day is actually in the classroom. So I, I like to get, because I'm a social guy, okay, and I've been living in this community for 14 years. I know these kids. I've taught, I've taught some of their brothers and sisters. Yeah. Hell, I, I taught some of the kids that the people that teach at our school. So I, I feel very comfortable in our community. I like to get outside my classroom at about 6:45 and start having fun with the kids. You know, talking to them. What's up? Blah blah blah. Um, and I'm very fortunate to have my daughter at school with me. She's a junior. She comes with her three friends that I've known for quite a long time. They all, we all sit down. And one of my assistant coaches, Mark Jernander, 
he's a legend. He sits down right with us and and we shoot the bull for about 20 minutes before school starts. And all my players and and some of the kids that I teach, they come up, we all fist bump. And I I just like to interact. Um, and I like to take advantage of my time with with the student body. Hmm. And I think I think that that helps our program a lot. But I, I think it helps um the kids are not great with their social interaction with adults. So I, I think it, it helps teach the kids that, hey, we're actually here to interact with you, with you all. It's way different than it was 20 years ago when I first started high school teaching, where you had to really keep your, you're expected to keep your, no, these kids need social interaction with adults. So I, I cherish that time from about 645. And then my classroom time goes until about 11 o'clock. That's where I like to unwind a little bit. And I'll go, I'll go into the office and, and I might watch some video. Um, uh, I also might catch up on the New York Post because I'm from New York and read about how the Yankees are choking the division. Uh, I get with my freshman six period and uh, we rotate. There's three of us that I have full time. Um, one, one Matt Fry, who I've had since he was grad, a college graduate. So he, he's 40 now. So that takes, <laughs> that's 17 years. And then Mark Jernander, who's been here for 18 years, but I've only been here 14. So I, we rotate with the freshmen. And, um, then I get to my basketball guys. And I think it's important that coaches have hobbies. I already mentioned one of them was exercising. And um, the other one is is uh, cooking. I love to cook. So being a New Yorker, we had small refrigerators and small kitchens. So I go to the grocery store every day, <laughs> like I'm still living in New York. Go to the grocery store, get home, start preparing dinner. So I, I think it's important that I have three hobbies. Exercise, yard work, which I didn't mention, and cooking. Because that takes me away hmm. from basketball. I, I think we have to get away from basketball, especially if you're like me and you live and die foolishly. It's it's idiotic. I, but if you live and die with every game, yeah. then you got to find some things that you're good at. And And I think being one with the community, I mentioned talking with the kids. That's the most important thing because we're – we're here to be role models and for our kids, whether they're your basketball player or your student in the classroom to feel yeah. safe because a lot of kids don't have it like we did growing up because all of them don't, you know, we, we played outside. They don't have, they have their phones and maybe a friend or two. They, they don't have the adult interaction that, that we did. And there's some really good, really good pointers there. First, I want to celebrate you on 4.15 a.m. That's hardcore, man. I, I've been doing uh, Jocko, Jocko Willick. I started drinking his his uh, Jocko energy drinks because they're really clean, uh, not a lot of ingredients, a little bit of caffeine. And But then I started following him. He gets up at 4.30 every day, never misses. Oh, I, I won't do it on Wednesday. Okay. So I'll go after school, but I, I do work out seven days a week. Nice. But uh, yeah, I appreciate that. And then what uh, what a great reminder. I think I needed to hear that about connecting with other students, out, especially those outside of the basketball program. I would say almost every coach is very intentional or should be intentional about building those relationships with their players and in and, and, and their program. But I'm wondering how many times, you know, be, maybe because of time or, or just wanting to get somewhere and get working and doing something that I just, not, I don't ignore people, but I don't take the time to be intentional to get to know other students. And and you're right. I mean, honestly, it, for high school coaches, or that, that's why we're here is to help young people become better human beings. Uh, and and I think I miss out on some of those opportunities. So I appreciate that that reminder. Yeah, I love I love the classroom and I love the hallways. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Shoot Three Hundred and Sixty. 
The future of basketball has arrived in Dallas-Fort Worth. Shoot 360 combines the latest sports technology with the fundamentals of basketball skill development. The result is a -a one-of-a-kind video game-like basketball program designed to improve your shooting, dribbling, and passing. Visit Shoot360DFW.com to learn more and register for your free one-hour workout evaluation. Shoe 360, the future of basketball is here. What's one quality that you see in great leaders? Enthusiasm. Every day, every day you have to have juice. And if, if you don't quite have the juice and you don't have an assistant with you, you know, you gotta find a way to provide that juice. You you got, and if, I don't care what it takes. If you got a, you got players on your team that you're really close with. Hey, you know, our money, I'm a little low on fuel today. I need you to somewhere you, you as a leader, you have to, you, you have to be trustworthy enough to, um, to hold your players accountable and let them have the keys and let them have responsibility. But if you don't have enthusiasm, then you're not you're not going to get anywhere, and I don't care what it, if it's in the house. You know you got to have enthusiasm. So you know I'm I'm a dad and I'm definitely not perfect, but you got to you got to have that energy. You got to have that, that juice. You got to have that fire. And I mean I, I learned that being a coach's son, but I also learned that from watching sports. Um, being a big Yankee fan and and growing up and watching these fearless leaders like uh, Don Manningly or Derek Jeter, um, that there was never a day that either one of them didn't provide that juice for their team. And 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 then it's it's not just your you know your basketball coaches and and all of our great leaders have flaws. I mean, Tiger Woods is. is <laughs> probably has more flaws than anybody, but I can't think of a greater example of guy that shows fire and passion and, and, and people are fascinated by yeah. what he does because of his enthusiasm and juice for life. So they got to have juice. There are so many laid back leaders. Yeah. It's easy to be laid back leader. If you're coaching seven McDonald's, all Americans, but <laughs> I don't, I can't, I don't do that. So I don't know any other way. <laughs> I, lo- I love that you shared that word. I mean, th- this week when, when we're talking our word that we're discussing and taking apart all week long is enthusiasm. It's one of our pillars. And we, we said at the very beginning of the week, nothing great was ever done without enthusiasm. We're talking about great things. You could be, like you said, you could be average or good even sometimes without it. If you want to be special and stand out, then you are going to bring enthusiasm. And I love the idea that you brought up of, of us as coaches having to mirror that. Have to, that we have to have it because I, we we demand. I think most of us demand that our players bring some type of spirit or joy every day. But do we always demand that from ourselves, or are we allowed to? You got, I'm not, I'm not, I think I've even said this before. I'm not your cheerleader. I'm not, it's not my job. It's your job to bring the energy, your job to bring the juice, like you're saying. And even though I I try to uh, most days, but if we ask them on the days where they're not feeling like it to fake it until they make it, and at least fake it until at one point it starts to become real, man, we have to do that too, right? Oh yeah. I mean, we do. And, and, you know, at a place like Clear Lake and our, our reputation is is that of a well-to-do uh, high school, which is quite the opposite. It's right in the middle. You know, we have we have kids from all walks of life. However, we also play in a three thousand seat gym. We have our own weight room. The kids have a beautiful locker room. So, I, if I don't do that, you know, my kids are going to be soft as a wet Q-tip. Yeah. And so, I don't care what it is. One day. Um, they were going through the motions and I can't stand, I cannot stand, uh, out of bounds, um, uh, zone defense or out of, out of bounds, uh, offense plays. I, I can't stand coaching them. It's just standing around. Right. Mm. 
but I know they're important. And a couple of our leaders were lollygagging and I got so angry to, I said, I got to liven this practice up. I just said, what are you doing? There's no desperation. And I grabbed my keys and I, I was at one, I was against the wall by the Gatorade bucket where the, the end line is. And I threw my keys and they went straight into the trash can against the opposite wall. And the whole place just died laughing. So sometimes you luck out with enthusiasm. You know, yeah, it doesn't always, that's good. It doesn't always bad. Sometimes you stumble upon it, right? <laughs> I mean, we're all morons. Like every single one of us, we're morons. So it, it I think there's a nugget there in, in maybe, you know, not taking ourselves too seriously. Yeah. Obviously, exactly. we're trying to be excellent every day and, and have a level uh, uh, of that uh, across what we're doing. But then also remembering, I, so I try to just remember this is this is 5A TAPS. I'm at Grapevine Faith Christian School. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't need to take myself too seriously. <laughs> you know, like, like we, we can't have fun. And and but that and that was relationships that you talked about earlier and bring in the juice every day. Yeah, that's big. Can't forget. And and you know where we are, I don't I don't care where you are, you need to look at it in my opinion. I think we all need to look at it as this is an entertainment industry. Hmm. We gotta be entertaining to our players, we gotta enter, be entertaining to the people at the game, um, and our community. So the more passion and energy that you can provide. I'm not talking like Nick Curios, the tennis player, you know, slamming rackets and stuff. But That's interesting. Uh, have well, some passion. Because I think the way that you play, the way that you guys shoot the ball, um, that idea of being entertaining, it, it it links together. It goes with it. And I, that's the way we play. I mean, I – before games, sometimes I'll remind the guys, listen, and not in a, not in a, not just in a joking way, but listen, there, there's people out there that paid five to seven dollars, yeah, to watch five to seven dollars to watch you play. Think about that, fellas. Let's let's give them a show. So I, I'm right on board with you. Let me ask you this: Does style of play can you be entertaining, energetic, show your passion, put on a show, but have a style of play that doesn't always reflect that? Sure. Sure. You, and, and in high school coaching, unless you're at schools that I won't mention, we don't recruit our own players. So, <laughs> I mean, uh, you have to you have to change your style of play every every year. Yeah. So um, there's there's times you can be entertaining. in a if you have have a team that can't really push the ball well because maybe maybe you have more size and, and less speed, but you can be entertaining by sharing the ball. Um, we have a team that's very fast. Um, not like a Tascacita fast, but we have a fast team, and we're a, a little on the skinny side, so uh, – we're going to entertain through running, but, you know, we're not going to let our opponents run. So we could be pressing and we'll still press, but to slow the opponent down. Right. Yeah. Um, but yeah, you can, you can clearly be entertaining without having one year. Um, not too long ago, we made it all the way to the state finals and we, we played us pretty basketball. It was pretty pure basketball and I said but before the year started that we need to break records for three-point shot attempts and I don't think I've ever even come close to having as few three-point shot attempts with a team all they did was take layups and pull up jumpers in the lane and get to the free throw line but they were pretty entertaining now, these guys that I have now they have to they have to bite people's ankles off and and dive on the floor and take charges. And that's my way of, and score a lot of points by doing that. That's my way of being entertaining. So you have to, you have to change your style every year. Um, well, hopefully you don't because that means you had some longevity with, you know, you might have two good sophomores yeah, up, and then they progress, but being realistic, uh, you, you do have to rearrange and, and, Restyle um, 
recalibrate whatever you want to call it every every year with your style of play. And there's a maybe a difference too between style of play and then concepts that you teach. Concepts sure. that you teach can stay and you can yeah. mold them into any style of play, but style of play, like you said, does have to change. And, and it made me think too, what you're saying, it's not necessarily what you do, but how you do what you do that is important. And that's what people will see that passion enthusiasm, regardless of, of if you're pack lining it, walking it up the floor, you know, five passes before you shoot like yeah. Hoosiers, it doesn't really matter as long as, like you said, there's a, there's maybe um, an attitude about what you're doing. Right. I agree. Totally. Oh, I love that. The coach, this is a brand new question that uh, one of my, I've got a, a little coaches circle, like a lot, like a lot of us do. And I asked them before I started these fall interviews, what are some different questions that I can bring into the mix? And this is one, what's a rule change that you would want to see and why? Uh-huh. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to give the answer that everybody gives. But I'm going to give it in a way that I think will be unique. Um, the shot clock. I'm I'm a really firm believer that we need a shot clock. And what it does is it allows teams to be more pure with basketball. It's, you know, a, these are goals. Goals are hard to achieve. You know, we're trying to shoot it in a goal. We're not trying to pass the ball around and, and avoid the goal. Um, and I, I think it, it it makes teams be more direct and more decisive. Um, you, you have these great teams that, you know, they're hosting, they're number three in the state, and they're hosting a good team. And the good team has grinded out a, a game and, and it's a six point game with four minutes left. You know, you're trying to upset, you're, you're down six and this great team pulls the ball out. And sure, you know, you have two division one point guards, you know, but if, if you had, if you had a shot clock, you'd have to have to execute. Yeah. And instead, you know, you're playing a game that that I don't think is as pure um, with with the strategies that, that we have today. Um, also, a shot clock can really help a team that can't press become a good yeah. pressing team. Oh, yeah. Good point. You, know, you, you run a 2-2-1 two, two, or run a 1-2-2, two, two, and all of a sudden, this great team that you're playing – has the ball with 16, 17, 18 seconds on the shot clock, and they got to execute. You know, they can't just pull it out, make you chase, drive it in hard and throw up an alley-oop to the corner of the back, the low, low corner of the backboard. And, you know, you know that's not – Yeah. That's a team a team that, that plays a great game and has put themselves in position to win the game or, or to, you know, let it be in the last seconds, last minute. Um, I think it's a shot clock is a great equalizer. It makes the game more pure. It helps teams become more direct uh, rather than indirect. And um, I sound like a soccer coach, but um, <laughs> the shot clock is something that's it's certainly needed. And, and it's it's worked in other states as well. I, in fact, when I was playing in Rhode Island, my freshman and sophomore year, I played high school in Rhode Island. And we had a shot clock our second year, 45 wow. seconds. 45 seconds. So don't tell me somebody can't work the, the shot clock. You know, you know I mean, that, that's a big joke. Uh, but our, our game is so good in this state. Um, whether you play, I know, we play Houston Christian every year because I respect Houston Christian. I don't care if you're private or public public school, you're gonna yeah. there's great coaches, great players. I, I think the fans deserve to see a modern game. And I, I think love I love some clock. of those. Yeah, I love some of those reasons that you gave. And and over over the the year and a half of getting to do this, I, I asked that question in the speed round quite a bit about do you want a shot clock or no shot clock? And 90, 95, 98% of the coaches would like it. 
I think they're uh, the only argument I've ever, you know, really heard of it that that I guess is, is valid is the 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 lesser team that maybe an, the only strategy they have is to take possessions out of the game, yeah, to slow it down enough, grind enough, you know, but uh, against a superior team uh, because but that's it, why I like it though. Yeah, sure. I mean. Okay, so you can still do that, but you're going to have to execute. Yeah. I mean, from a developmental standpoint, I think because I'm a huge proponent of skill work needs to be within, you know, offensive skill work and shooting needs to be 50% or more of your team practice, in my opinion. And so that, that will, I think it'll force more coaches and more programs to really look at how are we developing individually our players. And then also, What does how does our style maximize or benefit them, and and I think we'll see that emphasis increase a lot. And we're also we're working on that. You know, we're constantly be direct, be direct. You have one second to make a choice. One second, pass, dribble, shoot. Without there being a shot clock, you know, mm-hmm. we always tell our our good players. You know, in a, in a good year, we had we had a good team last year. And we had three players play college, you know, and we're always constantly telling them if you can't create a, a shot within, you know, 1.8 seconds, that you're never going to play unless you're a center. Yeah. And there aren't any centers anymore. So uh, <laughs> but we're constantly working on being direct, being direct. That's constant. And I think that's, let's look at it. It's the way to best way to live life. Is to be direct, to show passion, to 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 hit everything head on, to to always go out there and try to prove a point. Well, if you have an eight point lead with three minutes and forty five seconds left, and you're the way better team, what kind of point are you proving? Keep executing, you know. So yeah, no, I want, that's a good I point. Shot clock. I will say that the biggest part of because I don't think, and you're probably the same way, I don't think we would really ever see a, a shot clock violation. I mean, our goal is 12 seconds or less <laughs> off a of make or miss. So I probably probably wouldn't see it very much, but it would definitely change uh, late game strategy because yeah. I, I I take, I, I don't joystick and I give our players a lot of control sure. through our concepts throughout uh, three-fourths of the game or most of the game two minutes or less, if there is a lead, we do pull it out and we shoot free throws. We handle the ball well, and but it would, it would for the team that's down. Here's what I do yeah. like for the team that's down four to six points with even a minute 45 left. It's not uh, an amount that you have to, you know, start to necessarily press freak yep. out, do something weird. Yeah. Hey, just like we do every day in shell, this is a huge possession. Yep. You know, you get one stop, and then, like you said, execute. It would make, I, I think, the end of games way more entertaining. Yeah, and I, I think you'd see, I, I think you'd see more, more uh, that the teams that are really prepared in their execution um, pull away mm. too. You know, if if, if they're the the team up, you know, they're gonna they're gonna run a set. Or run an offense to try to get themselves to the foul line, or yeah. you know something like Talk that. Talk about shot selection being even more important at that stage yeah. of the game with a shot clock, because you can't yeah. have little Timmy out there thinking that anytime he's open with two minutes left right now, yeah. I can pull it. it. You better have shot clock established day one of practice if it, or, uh, or yeah. shot uh, selection I like established. It. I like it, and yeah. I, I know some people have gone out to California, yeah, and played tournaments and. And, and enjoy it too. So either way, the game's so good. It's not yeah. like, it's not like we're, you know, putting people to sleep. <laughs> Stands. Yeah. It, the, the idea that it's, it's, it'll destroy the game. And I have heard that a few times. It'll just change it dramatic. I just don't, I don't see it. I you're going to see, if, if, if they had a shot clock, you're going to see a lot more upsets. You're going to see a lot more upsets. You're going to see the team, that is driven by execution and being precise. Those teams are going to beat. They're going to march into places and, and beat them because they're decisive and they're directed. It's just the opposite. 
Mm. All you got to do is watch college basketball. There's a shot clock. And the teams that are so precise, they're, they're the teams that win. Think of Loyola and what they've done the last four or five years. Well, they <laughs> yes, they have good players, but they run some good stuff. And, and they're very basic. But they all catch and rip, and they they all are precise in their cuts, and it's just and and yet at the end of the game they still got seventy points. It's not like they're scoring, you know, forty one points per game. The Jamoti Podcast is powered by Sideline Interactive. Sideline Interactive is the leading manufacturer for high quality, innovative scoring tables and LED video display boards that help coaches and schools bring more excitement to fans create huge fundraising opportunities, and make their jobs easier. Visit sidelineinteractive.com to check out their amazing products. With how intentional you, you are with relationships with players and students, I would imagine you, know, you, you spend a lot of time with them off the court, or at least with you know, intentional conversation. So how and when do you meet with players? All the time. Um, I, had, I had a meeting today. Well, and and I want to make them informal. That's what, that's the way I like it. Um, I had one this morning between second and third period. I, I have a very balanced team. And I took one of our juniors who's very talented. He's a lefty. And I said, I said to him, uh, we have six players who I could consider, five, who I could consider to be the best player on our team and you're one of them. You know what that means? And he said, I need, I need to be level-headed every day. I need to be level-headed every day. I said, why, why is that? Well, if, if one of us, if one of us loses it, we're not, we're not a complete team because we have so many solid players. It's, it's going to take things away. And and so I was comparing it to last year's team where we were really led by one guy and the one guy never rattled. And I could deal with a couple other guys, you know, rattling and he got it. So it's, it's in a casual setting. Um, it depends what your policy is at school. You know, I text my kids. Um, and it's it's always a positive thing to I, I like to. I like to get them when they just get home from practice and, and um, I'll text them. Uh, I'll, I'm always around. I like to be around. So I like my kids to be coming in the office and I'll, and I'll get them always casually. The other thing I like to do is in the buildup of practice or throughout practice is to have an informal conversation with mm -hmm. every single player on my team during that practice wow just say hey and and knowing that this didn't happen hey i i, I heard you and natalie broke up today oh really you, you know and, and and knowing they did you, you know uh <laughs> well, why did I see her walking? Why did I see her? You still walking want that to backfire on you, right there? <laughs> why did I see her walking with that guy? You, you know, uh, uh, just just to have those little informal. Um, but when I have to have a meeting, I, I will. Um, I'm not a big meeting guy. I'm a more more informal conversation because, in some ways, I feel like more meetings lead to more rules more rules kind of leads to more uh tight like you're top tight everybody's up tight and i'm i'm more into here's the keys you know this is what we do so if i can approach the kids in the hallway and during our workouts or in the weight room um or with a short text, I think that's the best way to conduct a meeting. And and I like to, I, I make sure I communicate with all, uh, this year we have 14 kids, all 14 some way, whether it's at 6.30 in the morning when they're walking in to drop their stuff off in the locker room and I'm going to put my uh, khakis on, uh, 
what's up, dog? You know, you all right? You, you're doing a really good job, man. Hold it together and, and just know I'm looking at the small things. That's what I'm looking for. I'm looking at the small things. I'm not looking at the big things with you. Stuff like that, informal. Where they feel comfortable and they know that I don't bite. Have I know you, all, have you always been like that as far as not being necessarily a big rules guy, you know, like Bob Hurley senior that had the 19, 19 rules and every, uh, that all the kids had to live by, but yeah, he also the clientele he had maybe. Yeah, that's that, what I was yeah. going to say, yeah. Uh, um, you know, he, he's from a different setting, um, background and era. Yeah. You know, he, there's no better coach than coach Hurley at all. And, in the history of our game, as far as I'm concerned. Hmm. Um, but he had, he had his way of doing things because that's what worked. You know, if, if he had gone there, if he had used the same policy at Duke, those players would be transferring <laughs> left and right. <laughs> but you, have you all, like, have you always been like that? And, and what said, influenced you to kind of take that, yeah. that approach? Yes. Um, trustworthy like you show trustworthiness so it's primary pillar right um my father was you know i played for him and he was the same way i coached for jim herrick you know he was my boss at rhode island and you talk about a guy that wasn't ego driven he's you know very informal you guys have your responsibilities let's love each other and let's respect each other and let's, let's go. Um, but that's what works for me. And I've, I've seen, I've seen it work other ways in other places. So it just works for me. I'm not, I don't know if my way is the right way. Well, I, I think that's the, that's the ticket though, right there is find what works for you and make sure that what, what is working for you is benefiting your players. You're getting positive feedback from them right. because if you if you want to be a certain way, but it's completely pushing your players away from you, yeah. then it's time to change. But that self awareness to know that is huge. Yeah, and there, and there's times where, um, and I always want to keep my players on their toes too. Uh, like today, I was like, you know, Patrick positive, and tomorrow I might you know, incite a, <laughs> a verbal uh, riot in there, you know, because uh, that's more fun anyway. So it's not, I'm not always the same way. I'm just, I, I try to show that passion and, and keep my kids on their toes. How much with you is organization, meaning you, you've had this, this script planned, whether it's whether it's practice, whether it's it's kind of the week by week going through your fall or, or the season, and how much of it is spontaneous. Because I get a feeling from you that you you have great ideas, and when they come to you, you go you go with them. Yeah, my hobbies. Uh, I have hobbies because all I do is think about basketball. So I do these hobbies and I'm thinking about basketball and something comes to my mind and that's where I get a lot of my ideas. But no, I am not organized at all for the week. Um, not one bit, not even close. Where I am organized is with a practice plan and with a, with a game plan for our opponent. So I'm an index card guy. I have, I have index cards after index cards after index cards. Um, <laughs> They turn into notebooks. I write really neat. Um, I get into patterns. Like I'll, I start with the legal pad uh, this week, um, and then I'll get to my note cards. But I, you know, I have I use note cards. I, I love note cards because I I, I love hand, I take pride in my handwriting because I'm a lefty. And, and good for uh, you, man. I can't stand my handwriting. I and just, well, it's just my my parents are teachers. Everybody in my family is a teacher, so you you have to like you have to have good handwriting. So I like to show my kids that I take a lot of pride in in my handwriting, and everything's on an index card. I don't I don't type up any game plan, um, but really the only time I'm organized 
is is when I have a practice plan. Um, I'm not a big stats guy because I, I've been told that you can't win with a pull-up jumper in the, in the paint. And meanwhile, I'm watching Chris Paul <laughs> win, <laughs> you know, <laughs> get to the yeah. – I mean, I, or our kids just pop it in. I, I, I don't over, although I, I have noticed that our our left corner three percentage is absolutely ridiculous at a high level. Like I will look at stats. I will look at stats, but I'm not totally analytic because I, I think that if you're, if you're, if you want to share the ball, I think you're going to win a, a game a different way every night. I think your kids have to play with more freedom than to be so analytic. Um, I, I, I'm not off the subject of organization. No, no. So I, I do say that I give them goals. Okay, so this year, 10 turnovers per game that we, that we commit, okay? Um, 64 shots, offensive shots per game, 20 free throws, and we'll be, we'll be unbeaten in most of our games. Um, if we do that. Um, and I also, oh, and the other one is 43% shooting as a team. What are you basing those off of? Is it last Six. year's, last year's stats are also what you think they're capable of? It's experience. Yeah. So I know we have to run. I, we have to run. And the greatest running teams in, in the modern era, I'll even – I'll toot my father's horns. His teams were the lowest turnover committing teams in the country. Like, Or you'd see Temple, who is slow down, right? John Beeline – He's one of the best coaches that I've ever seen. Period. And it, there's about 30 of them, right? His teams at Michigan, his teams at West Virginia, and his teams at Richmond played so fast, and they would average 8.9 turnovers per game, mm. 9.5 turnovers per game. It, it's those teams that play fast that don't respect the ball that end up being sloppy and lose big games. If you could play fast, and take care of the ball, that means you have proper spacing. You're tightening your gaps a little bit. Um, 15 feet of space. You're being direct. You're Coach, being a... 15 feet will get them beat. Yes, remember I remember that. that from your TABC, and I've yeah. stolen that and use it every year. Yeah. That's all you, man. I don't know. Thank you. <laughs> but, no, I'm serious. Yeah. You know, I mean, it, it's just – it's – that is organization to me. And, and I, I say to my wife in the house, and she's, she's always saying, Tommy, what are these clothes doing here? Well, you know, when, when I changed a shirt to go mow the grass outside, I, I'm going to take that shirt. I didn't sweat it. I'm going to fold it. I'm going to put it up here on the counter. And I'm going to put the shorts that I was wearing to coach in because I was just coaching. I didn't sweat. I might want to recite. Why don't you just put them away? And she and I'm like, honey, I'm that is my way of organization. I'm I'm disorganized, but I'm actually organized. I know where everything. She laughed her. <laughs> I mean, it's just it, it's funny. That is my way. Index cards. You have a formula for wins, and there's some teams where you don't have a formula. Because you might be so loaded with talent um, that you don't need that. But that's that's the way I organize. Coaches, the Jamoti Podcast is powered by Biology. What's your BSA score? The Biology Skills Assessment is the only verified skills metric endorsed by the NAIA, NJCAA, and a growing number of NCAA coaches to discover and develop the best talent for your team. This four minute, 40 shot test can be taken free today on the Bology mobile app. Elevate your game. I love your idea of running a program, not on rules, but more off of standards and pillars. And you've mentioned a few of them throughout our talk, but 
what are the standard pillars of your program? Okay, so the first the first rule is to be a good kid. The second rule is to be a good kid. That was stolen from Jim Herrick. And I can't think of better advice. Like our program is driven on our kids being model model students with a low profile in the hallways. Mm. Quiet, like respectful. You can joke and talk, but low profile. I want you being the most respected kid. So it's trustworthy trustworthiness. That's part of it. Respect, community, citizenship. Um, you name it, they're they're all there. But if you go along with the concept of being a good kid and being a good kid, that's it, it's there. It, it's it's there every time. Um, and so that is my my main priority is and I I said to our kids that we we're working out this summer, you know, all these workouts that we're allowed to do is just a great thing. I love it. And I said I, you guys are the nicest kids I've ever coached. And that's saying a lot because I, we have great parents here. So you can imagine what the type of kids we get. But they are, they're the greatest kids. But they got to get tougher, right? <laughs> they, they're not, you know, we need a little edge. But um, no, the, the, those pillars are, are what we rely on. Um, Community and citizenship, respect, trustworthiness. Uh, I'm missing, I'm missing one. Um, but there's, there's six. Enthusiasm? Pillars. Did you say that? Well, enthusiasm goes without being said. Without being said. Yeah, but those are those are yeah. important. Um, but I, I want to coach great kids. I, I had a coach uh, who I'm really close friends with, and last year. We won 23 games and we had three teams in our district that were in the state top 15. Hmm. And it was tough. Our, it was so tough. And I was a little down and he had a team that was in the top five in the state. And he said, Tommy, I'd rather, I'd rather be 23 and 12 and coach kids that, that are so responsible and so driven to, to be team and community and blah, 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 than have to worry about headaches and yeah. putting out fires left and right and dealing with parents running on the floors. And, you know, that, that to me is, that's the biggest thing is, is character. It's, it's much more important than, than wins and losses. And you know what, if that gets me fired because my kids are going to behave and they're going to do right, I, I could give two craps, you know, um, the funny thing is it'll probably lead to uh, if they're if you do demand that and create that environment where they are responsible, they're nice kids, then they'll probably uh, act really well to not get in trouble, to not get you on the radar to get fired. Sure. But then also all those characteristics you talk about, they usually lead, in my opinion, to winning. Yeah, they do. Um, and by all means, we're not perfect. I'm going to make some mistakes. I'm going to say something you know, to an official that I shouldn't, um, I may lose it, um, for a moment and say something I regretted saying to one of my players. Um, but as long as they know you're human and you're not perfect too, uh, I think, I think you're going to be ahead of the game. You mentioned something. Perfect. Sorry, go ahead. I, I, I know I'm really good looking, but I'm, I'm not perfect. <laughs> <laughs> As you can tell, I've already lost my voice. Yeah, I, you you said something about toughness, and because I feel like the, you know, the the clientele that you have there is similar to Faith. Um, yeah. In in the way that they've, you know, their parents have done an amazing job for the most part of creating great lives for them. So natural adversity that some kids grow up in or see, not all of them have, and and th so there's a level of toughness that is natural for in some of those programs where man these these kids have had had it tough in in a team like yours uh how do you can you create that toughness in them and what are some ways that you do that sure i'm constantly telling them to mirror my image mirror my image mirror my image mirror my image and 
I, I'm just being honest with them, and you could do the same. I mean, I, I know who you are too. But when I played, I would take a charge on a bus. Yeah. If I knew it would keep me in a game. Um, I'm I'm a little I'm I'm not I'm I'm so passionate that I'm not afraid of any opponent. And that goes back to where maybe growing up in New York, yeah. you know, and, and that's, it's all about toughness. Um, showing them a multi-million dollar player from Dallas who takes more charges than anybody in the history of the NBA game. Um, what's his name? Played with Forte. Marcus Smart. Self- yeah. Um, Marcus Smart, you know. Um, that's toughness, you know. Um, but see that that's you're you're doing it there though. You're you're showing them actually what toughness is, yeah, either through your own can. actions or through someone else. Because I think we, as coaches, we're guilty of. I know I am of throwing around words that we want them to be, but without defining it or giving yeah. them a real picture of what it could look like. I'm getting better at that now because of uh, being a parent. So. Um, Grabbing, grabbing a loose ball, show, uh, showing, you know, grab it with you, grab it, you grab it, and, and I will be emphatic. Um, that's toughness, you know, not dribbling out a loose ball, grabbing it and ripping it. That's that's making the tough play. You know, you know, Armani the most. Well, I'm not gonna say it to him because he's six eight. I want him blocking shots. You know, uh, <laughs> Jason. The most intimidating play in basketball is the charge, taking a charge. It's the most intimidating play. If you want to be known as intimidating, you know what I want? I want players who our opponent is not comfortable playing against. I want them saying to each other in the locker room, I don't like playing against Eric Villarreal. I don't like playing. But right now, Eric, they like playing against you. That's not toughness. What can you do? legally within the framework of the rules yeah yeah that's toughness and and then they look at me like i'm crazy i said you know i'm 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 arthritic and i'm still moving fairly well but i i I limp and sometimes i limp bad you don't you know you sweethearts know that i i ran five marathons i ran five marathons five you know how long a marathon you, you know you gotta be willing to tell them that you you do this, you know, what What did I do this morning? What did I do? I got up at 5, 5, 4, 430. I got to the gym at 450 and I, and I did 200 flights. You think that's easy? No, I'm preaching toughness because I'm trying to model toughness. Yeah. And, and I'm enthusiastic when I'm hitting this. I, I love doing that. I love, because that is the only way to live life is with passion and with fire. I like to live every day trying to prove somebody wrong. Prove the teacher in the hallway that thinks coaches are crap uh, teachers. Oh, I'll show you. You come in my room. You know, you know, and that's in New York in me too. That's right. But but it's piss and vinegar. And, And so that is the way to get into that 20, 25% of greatness that life can be. And and if you're in that 75%, you're grinding, that makes that 75% part of that 25%. It makes you enjoy it. Because I don't like being on the Stairmaster, but I'm, I'm going to tell you what, at the end of 40 minutes, when that thing's over and I'm dripping wet, I look back at that 40 minutes as being part of that 25%. Mm. And all of a sudden, that 25% goes up to 32%. Maybe you think I'm crazy, but no, I dig it. I, I dig think it. being tough is fun. Like, and it it probably kill me by the time I'm 75. Um, but I'm I'm gonna live a good t- life and and uh, enjoy it. Coach, I think so many uh, coaches get to have heard you speak before and, and know who you are. But after the speed round, we're just gonna know a little bit more. So okay. these are these are quick questions. First thing that pops in your head. You ready? Yeah. Favorite ice cream flavor? Strawberry. Especially since you get up in the morning early, how many hours of sleep do you need? Eight. So you're going to bed pretty early then to get yes. up at 
<laughs> sometimes I'll get seven, sometimes six yeah. and a half. Okay. Best basketball movie of all time. Hoosiers. For, oh, I, I already know that. It was a shot clock question. I already know that. Uh, texting or talking? Texting. Favorite holiday? Uh, Memorial Day. Hmm. You want to know why? Yes, sir. It means the start of summer. And I love the ocean. I, I'm a, I consider myself to be the number one body surfer in the United States. So I, I like to get out. I, I, I start thinking about riding waves on the East Coast. And I don't East Coast. Go. East Coast over West Coast. Uh, I, mean, I know West you're not from New York, but. Yeah. West Coast can be a little bit too rough. Okay. And I, I tell you what, at the age of 50, now I'm scared of sharks. There's more shark attacks in California. So, and I don't want to, I don't want to have to wear a wetsuit. California, the water's too cold. Ah, that's a good point. Yep. All right. In basketball, who is the goat? Michael Jordan. <laughs> Come on. <That's, laughs> that was, Come on. That was a cream puff question. Yeah. If you could travel back in time, what period would you visit? Great question. I would I would like to I would like to visit the fifties. Um because you'd get to see fifties and sixties, I'd get to see my parents growing up. Yeah. And, and watching the people of my grandparents' age, because most people consider that generation to be the greatest generation in the history of the United States. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I think I think we could all benefit from from learning from from those people. I, I think I think those people were they were raised upon the belief in loving um, their country, each other. And grinding it out, like it's that toughness thing. And yeah. I, I think we we should all find a way to get back to that. That's good. I think it'll make our country better. And it already is a great country that we live it in. It is, but yeah, I, I agree with you. Two more. How many cups of coffee do you drink per day? Two, always two. I was told that drinking black coffee, two cups of coffee can be good for your arteries and good for your heart. So only black and Dunkin' Donuts uh, iced coffee black. I don't care if it's 25 degrees out, which in Houston, it doesn't get that way. That's right. Like two days a year, probably. But it's it's always an iced coffee black without a straw. And wow. when, even when my daughter drives up to Dunkin' Donuts and she orders herself, and she let's say she's getting it for me. I'm watching a soccer game at 6.30 in the morning at the house. Because, you know, in, in England, they the games are early. And, are you, you know, a big fan? Oh yeah, huge. Have you um, watched the FX show yet? Of uh, it's Wrexham or something like that. But yeah, it's yeah. Ryan... I'm, on, I'm on episode four. Nice. Okay. Yeah, I, I'm. I'm right there. You can watch that. It's good. I, I'm, I'm on episode two or three, but I think it's fascinating. And Ted Lasso, love it. Ted Lasso is great. <laughs> uh, my daughter will order her strawberry dragon fruit refresher, and then. They'll, they'll say a, a large iced coffee black, and I won't be in the car. They know not to give her a straw for my for my Dunkin' Donuts. You, you, my friend, I you're don't. big time when that's that it. happens. That's it. coffee. I don't care how many wins or anything. That's <laughs> big time. <laughs> Last one. Godfather, Star Wars, or neither? Neither. Okay. What genre or what, what movie is kind of a go-to? Okay, it's always been the Vietnam movies. Uh, Platoon, Green Berets? Yes. John Wayne. Uh, um, Apoc Apocalypse Now, Platoon, huh. um, Hamburger Hill. Always been that way. I, I don't know why. Yeah, what, just, what draws you to that? I think that they're very vivid in their action. So I, I've gone saving up to Saving Private Ryan, That's which good. covers World War II. Yeah. Um, but... The new Top Gun, Maverick, tops tops everything. It's the best movie I've ever seen. Wow. Best movie I've ever seen. I, it was so entertaining. And he, he's awesome. Be, yeah, he's awesome. It needs to be watched in a theater. Yes. With the sound, with yeah. the bass shaking you as those. And, and really cool to see behind the scenes on how they actually had the actors in the plane yeah. so yeah. that they're, they're feeling all yeah. of that. That was pretty cool.
and the beauty of it. Uh, there's some great scenery and, uh, you know, the mountains and the, the water. And it, it was just, it was really, really well done. First, I just want to thank you so much for, for giving yeah, up great, great over this. an hour of your time. Uh, but I learned a lot about you. I've always, I've been a fan and have been able to learn from you from afar before, but really a pleasure just getting to have this in-depth talk with you. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it's great to visit with you and, and, and to just shoot the bull and, and, um, Try you get you know something like this. It gets me thinking about things that maybe I haven't thought about in a while either, and it it helps energize me and reclaim my love for coaching. Not that it's ever abandoned me, but it it gets today got me fired up. Oh, I love hearing that, Coach. If anybody has questions, kind of on you know some of your concepts or things that you that you talked about today, what's a great way for them to follow you or contact you? Yeah, uh, Twitter, Twitter is is always the best. Uh, I'm at TPNYY, um, and uh, you know my cell phone too. I don't three six one six five five seven nine six four. Um, Love I, it. I'm in. So, man, thanks, Coach. I really appreciate this. Yep, it's great to have you, Matt. Thank you for checking out today's episode. Please take a moment to subscribe to this podcast, share it with your fellow coaches, and find us on social media for what's coming up next on the Jamoti Podcast. It's just a matter of doing it.